The backhoe is working again. Uh, I've got it up in the pole barn. Uh, and this is also where the, the cats, uh, there, there's one of them, I think that's black cat. This is where the feral cats uh, ended up after I've got them all neutered and uh, taken care of. But uh, this is their, their feeding station over here. Uh, I've got them up on some of these racks here. And I think that's, uh, that's midnight over there. But it's a nice place for feral, sort of feral cats to hang out. Uh, I, I keep them fed. Hopefully they stay out of the, seem to be staying out of the arch barn. And uh, they've got a little bit of food left over here and they've got some water there. Uh, but uh, this, this video is not about cats. Uh, this, this video is, is about the backhoe. The, the backhoe is, is working again. Uh, it, it's uh, almost a year now, but uh, uh, last winter, well, well I, I bought it used, and uh, uh, a after I got the initial uh, uh, fix-up work done from buying a not-so-good uh, used piece of equipment, uh, it was working pretty good. And it always started up real nice. Uh, never any problem with that. But uh, then uh, it, it, it got to the point, if I let it sit too long, it would uh, just not uh, start. Um, it was like it wasn't getting fuel into the uh, uh, fuel injector. And, and so th this got worse and worse and, until it, it wouldn't even start at all. Uh, we, we started... Uh, well, we went, went through uh, checking all the, the, the diesel feed lines, uh, and you know, we got, you know, the fuel, fuel filters here, uh, and, and we've got the fuel injector here, and, and we, we bled off, uh, this is Jeffrey and I working on this thing, we, we, we bled off the different areas to make sure there was no air in the lines and make sure that... Uh, fuel was draining and we get fuel all the way down uh, in, into the going into the fuel injector uh, into the injector pump but uh, coming out of the high pressure side of the injector point these lines here uh, we wouldn't get uh, any fuel at all going up in, into the uh, the cylinder injectors there uh, so we, we, we decided that uh, the, the fuel injector was, was probably bad, needed to be rebuilt, and so we, we undertook uh, a repair job to, uh, uh, to do that. Uh, so we brought it into the arch barn, and uh, uh, I've got uh, a series of videos that uh, I, I took uh, uh, for you know, doing this repair. So, so we ha had to remove the, the fuel injector, I, I sent it off to uh, uh, a specialist that uh, uh, they specialize in repairing fuel inject, diesel fuel injectors. Uh, and, and it turns out after talking to him, he said that this particular injector w was very difficult for uh, a, a non-expert to uh, try to repair by themselves. Uh, but anyhow, uh, he repaired it. This is the new one that you see in there. Uh, but uh, in order to uh, get this uh, fuel injector out, get the pump out, uh, we we had to take all all this stuff off the fr off, off the front of the tractor. There's big cowling, and and, and then there there's a, a hydraulic pump in 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 front here. Uh, there's a hydraulic uh, uh, cooling radiator. Uh, there's a hydraulic reservoir behind here. Uh, so it was, it was a big mess getting all this stuff out. And, and while we had it out, uh, we decided it'd be best to do some uh, uh, repairs or improvements uh, to that part of the tractor. And, and so we did that as well. And, and so this video is going to be about, uh, well, the next few videos maybe, uh, is going to be about uh, 
uh, th this repair project and, and getting the backhoe working again. Note I kept saying fuel injector when referring to the fuel injector pump. Yes, it's the pump. So here's the backhoe down in the arch barn. We used that lift to uh, take off that front cowling. It's, it's very heavy. It has added metal weights to, to it to help hold down the front end. In order to keep the bucket up in the air and the lift arms up out of the way, there's a brace that can be lowered down from the lift arm that fits over the extended cylinder. When not in use, this brace is moved up and, and held up against that lift arm by a pin. We've got a chain going across between the two rear support legs, the legs that uh, support the backhoe when it's in use, that they would sink down without the hydraulics being active. I wouldn't want them to mash into something. But uh, there's the hydraulic radiator, the hydraulic oil cooler, and the hydraulic uh, uh, fluid tank. Uh, those are put off to the side. We've got the fan off. We've got the engine radiator off. And we already have the uh, injection pump out of there and, and sent off to uh, uh, be repaired. There's the engine radiator, there's the fan, and that black cowling thing that I'm picking up now, uh, that's in two pieces. That, that's the cowling that goes behind the radiator that funnels the air that the fan is uh, directing uh, uh, past the radiator. So that, that's, that's mashed apart. And I'm going to have to rebuild or replace that somehow. When everything's together, this front part of the backhoe is very difficult to work on. The hydraulic fluid reservoir sits down there on top of everything. The hydraulic fluid radiator folds back and, and is on top of everything. So just in front of the fan belt uh, and those three pulleys that you see there, of course, there's the fan and then the radiator sits there. And, and so it's almost impossible to get down to that drive shaft that's actually providing power to the hydraulic pump that, that's right underneath the uh, hydraulic fluid reservoir and, and the uh, oil cooler in front there. So you can almost forget about doing maintenance on those two hydraulic hoses that are underneath that drive line there. But that's what needed to be done. Back in October of 2018, I had a catastrophic rupture of, of these hydraulic hoses underneath that pulley. These hoses provide hydraulic fluid to the uh, cylinders that run the power steering of the backhoe. At the time, I was over at Jeffrey's place working on uh, the road coming up to his house uh, trying to get the drainage under control. He had the International out there with the blade. With the steering out on the backhoe, I, I managed to get it off the road to the side where I could work on it, but there's no way we could get it back to the barn. Just below the alternator is the power steering pump and fluid reservoir, and there are hard lines that go toward the back of the tractor that connect into the, the steering control valve. And then there's hard lines that then go forward up to the, where those uh, flexible hydraulic lines ruptured. So these are the lines that I needed to replace. It was awkward and difficult, but I got it done. And now, six years later, I can better inspect how I did on that job. And there's a problem. You, you can see at the top of that tight loop, uh, the, the hose is actually being worn. 
on the initial repair, I, I wasn't able to put those plastic straps around the hose to tie them together. And I didn't realize that the hoses were further up uh, rubbing against that turning drive shaft. So the drive shaft was wearing a hole in my brand new hoses. So now with better visibility and access to the problem, I tied those two hoses together and then used a, a bolt and some big uh, fender washers to strap them down solid to that deck so they would stay out of the way of the drive shaft. So I, I think that repair is going to be okay for a while now. In future videos, we'll cover other parts of this backhoe repair. Thanks for watching Longleaf Sheep Hill Ranch. See you next time.